Hello and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial. Today we're looking at applying textures to your own work in Photoshop. Now the photo I'm using here is from the 50 High Res Autumn Photos collection. The hearts that I'm going to use are from Doodle Hearts Clip Art and all the textures that we're using are from the Ultimate Texture and Photography Kit. And I'm using ones from Reflection Subset, Epiphany, Festival Lights, Black Magic and Photo Mask and you can see that they're all very, very different textures. So let's see how we might put them to use in our own work here in Photoshop. We're going to start with this Photo Mask and so I'm opening up the Layers palette here. You can of course get to that by choosing Window and then Layers to view it. I'm going to drag this layer onto my photo when I drop it onto the photo, if I do that holding the shift key, then it's going to be centered in the middle of the photo. That just makes life a little bit easier. I'm going to scale it up a little bit bigger so it sort of fits over my photo. Now to use this as a clipping mask so that we see the photo where the black bits are and not where they aren't, then what we need to do over here is to unlock our background layer. So I just click on that little lock icon and that unlocks it. In earlier versions of Photoshop, you might need to double click that layer and click OK to unlock it. Now I'm going to reverse the order of this. I'm going to pick up one of these layers, the top one, and just move it underneath. And we're going to create what's called a clipping mask here. So with this topmost layer selected, you'll go to Layer and then Create Clipping Mask. And we'll see here that the photograph is now clipped to the shape of the black photo mask. Now, of course, what we've got behind this is just transparency. And if you want to see what it would look like with a colored or a plain white background, let's just add a new layer to the document and let's move it underneath everything. And I'm going to fill it with the background color. So I'll press Control Backspace. That would be Command Delete on the Mac. And of course, you could sample other colors from the image and use that as the background as well. Photo masks are typically best used for photos. So let me just get rid of those bits and pieces and let's go back and try another one of our textures. I'm going to select Reflection. So Reflection comes with green on the top and blue on the bottom. Let's just go and have a look at our photograph. Basically the photograph's the other way around. The greeny sort of area is in the bottom and the blue is sort of at the top. So before we use this one, let's flip it. So I'll choose Image and then Image Rotation 180 degrees. That gives me the colors a bit better organized for the image that I'm going to use them on. I'll drag this background layer and drop it on the photo. Again, holding Shift so it goes immediately over the middle of the photograph. When you use textures like this that are 100% opaque, you'll see that they just cover up the photograph entirely. But there are some ways that you can blend this into the layer below, and that's using these blend modes. So by default, it's always set to normal, but you can run down the blend modes and just see what you get. So this is Dissolve and Darken. And in this case, I'm working on a PC. So once I've selected one blend mode, I can just use the down arrow key to scroll through the blend modes. It doesn't work like that on a Mac. On a Mac, what you'll need to do is make sure that you don't have a brush tool selected. So something like the rectangular marquee tool is a really good tool to use for this. And then you'll go and set your first blend mode. So just go to one of the blend modes. And from there on, you can use Shift and Plus and Shift and Minus to scroll through the blend modes. So a little bit different on the Mac as to on the PC. But basically, what you'll want to do is scroll around these blend modes until you find something that you like. Now, there are a couple of shortcuts that you can use because there are a few blend modes that typically work really well. Multiply is a blend mode that will darken things and it's sort of like the go-to darkening blend mode. And likewise, Screen is the sort of go-to lightning blend mode. And with Overlay, everything's a bit contrasty. So the texture is being blended into the image using the lights and darks in different ways. But that doesn't mean that these are the only blend modes you can use. Sometimes soft light will absolutely rock it and sometimes it doesn't. So just run through the blend modes and see if you can find something that you like. Today, it's soft light for me, so I quite like that. And now we're seeing the texture in the sky and it's bringing a bit of color as well. So I'm going to turn it off and on and you can see how the texture is affecting the image. Now, if it's too much texture, you can go to the texture layer and just reduce the opacity. 
In some cases, you may get a difference in the effect if you reduce the fill. Some blend modes work differently on different fills to what they work with on different opacities. And other blend modes, fill and opacity are pretty much the same. So just be warned about that. So, so much for that texture. Let's turn that off and let's go and find another one. This time let's go and see Epiphany because this texture is really interesting. You may not see this as having a lot of potential, but it does. So let's just drag it up and drop it onto our photograph. This is a very dark texture, so let's see what it offers in the way of effects on our photograph. And possibly screen is going to give us something. Screen gives us quite a lot here. And so too may soft light. Again, soft light's really rocking it here with this particular texture. But it's worth looking at some others. For example, vivid light and linear light. If you sort of like what you're seeing, but it's way too intense, then always just reduce the opacity and see if that gives you a better result. Now, a trick with this opacity slider is to wind it back to zero so that you're totally removing the effect and then just taken up gradually. Now I'm using what are called scrubby sliders here. So I'm just hovering over the word opacity and just dragging. So I can drag it up to increase the amount. And sometimes you'll find that you get a less ham-fisted approach if you start at zero and work up than if you try to remove the effect. Effect. But that's a nice little texture there to add some sort of scratch and a little bit of contrast to this photo. Festival lights are this sort of bouquet look and they look really good on photos, but they also work really well on art. So let's go and drag this onto our hearts. And again, we're going to need to apply a blend mode. And let's just have a look and see the hearts that I've got. I've got one with a pink color and one with black. The reason for this is that blend modes are going to work differently on light and dark colors. And you may want to experiment with using light and dark colors. So let's just run down the blend modes and see if we can get something that is interesting. Well, at multiply, we start seeing the bokeh effect in this heart, but nothing's happening with the black. But something really interesting happens at the lighten point, And you can see here that the black has actually picked up all the color here. So that's something to be aware of is that black shapes may pick up some of the actual image texture there. This is linear dodge. Again, the black is really picking it up. Now, as we work through these blend modes, you'll see that some of the blend modes don't interact with the white background that I have at all, and some of them do. So just be aware of that too, is that some of the blend modes will isolate these shapes from the background and others will actually bring the lights in as the background and just alter the shapes themselves. So let's take this same texture and see how it interacts with our photograph. Again, it's bringing a lot of color into the mix and probably your sweet spot with a texture like this on a photograph is going to be in the lightning area. So something like screen is really interesting. Now, I like the effect as it is applied to the sky, but I'm thinking it's a little bit much in the foreground. So when you have a texture like this and you're applying it, for example, in screen blend mode, let's see how we might limit it to only the sky and not the foreground. Well, I'm going to click on the texture layer and click to add a layer mask. So that's this icon here, add layer mask. And then I'm going to go and get a gradient. So I'm coming all the way over here to the toolbar and I'm going to click on the gradient tool. And in the gradient tool, the third one in is a black to white gradient. It's always there, or it should always be there, your black to white gradient. So I'm just going to click on that to select it. I'm going to come back to my mask here and I'm going to apply it to my mask. So I'm making sure that I have my mask targeted. I'm going to drag up. And if I get it wrong and the gradient goes in the wrong way, all I need to do is to go and put it in the other way. But I had it right in the first place. Now, if you hold the shift key as you drag in your gradient, it's going to be a straight line. And so with this effect, the gradient on the texture, I'm able to subtly blend in the textures. So it sort of starts to appear here, but not at the very bottom of the image. And if I want it to go further, I'll just start higher up in the image. And then it's limited pretty much to the mountains and the sky. 
Continuing on, let's turn this texture off and let's go and have a look at our black magic texture. This is just a black and white texture. So again, let's try it out on our photograph. Now a texture like this is going to work particularly well in screen blend mode where we're going to lose the black and we're going to just pick up the white areas. So here you can see that the black has been totally lost in this image and all we're doing is borrowing the very lighter areas of that texture. And again, I can just reduce the opacity should I wish to do so. We can also use that on art. So let's go back and grab black magic and let's drop it on top of our hearts. And I'll just disable the previous Festival Lights texture for now. And let's go and see what screen blend mode looks like here. Well, this texture is going to work well on anything. And you can see that it's sort of grunged up the black heart as well as the pink heart. So don't go past textures that look like this. There's a lot of mileage to be gained from them. Now, of course, it's also possible to stack your textures and to sort of just have them on top of each other. So let's just put the festival lights and this black magic texture together. Sometimes you might get a slightly different effect if you stack them in a different order and sometimes you won't, but it's always worth checking. So don't be afraid to stack these textures up to see what kind of effects you can get. Textures like these are really good for adding visual interest to your photos. And of course, that means that they're great for using for social media purposes, as well as for simply texturing your own art. I hope that you've enjoyed learning these Photoshop texture techniques. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.